Hey everybody, this is going to be uh, two parts to our notes. Uh, one, the first part you're going to put on your own notebook paper, and the second part of the notes will be found on that worksheet that you were given, slopes of secant lines. All right. So to start with, the topic for these notes will be slopes of secant and tangent lines. We're going to start with a look at secant line to a nonlinear graph. So in these notes, we're just getting some background information about the next topic we're going to cover. All right, so for a secant line to a nonlinear graph, let's go ahead and get a picture of what we're talking about. I'm going to pick on two points on this graph, one point at x sub 1 and another at x sub 2, two x values along the x-axis. And I'm going, to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and name this graph y equals f of x. All right, so picking on these two points at x sub 1 and x sub 2, if I can quickly draw in a couple of points here. I want to look at the notation associated with each of those ordered pairs. So for example, if I'm going to label this ordered pair or this point right here using ordered pair, I'll call this x sub 1 comma f evaluated at x sub 1. So likewise up here at this point, We'll name this point x sub 2 comma f evaluated at x sub 2. Just a way to represent the y coordinate if we don't know what it is. Okay. So I needed another parenthesis here to close the ordered pairs. Okay. All right. And you can also look at the y values along the y axis over here. So if I were to take this ordered pair and just kind of extend it over here to this, this, this placement right here, this would be um, f evaluated at x sub 1. So just trying to get used to used to the different kinds of you know notation that we might use okay, in this course. So f evaluated at x sub 2. That's x sub 2, subscript 2. All right, so we're, we're considering a secant line to a nonlinear graph. That's what we have before us, a nonlinear graph. And now the secant line through these two points, if you have a straight edge, you might want to take a ruler, your ID, or any other kind of device, the straight edge, and uh, connect these two points right here. So we're looking at the average rate of change, the average change from x sub 1 to x sub 2. So without a straight edge for me, I'll do the best I can in drawing a secant line through these two points. It's not going to be pretty. Okay. All right, so that's a graphical representation of the average rate of change from x sub 1 to x sub 2. All right, so I want to come over here and talk about a secant line to a nonlinear graph. When we think about secant lines, some of the things I want you to connect to is um, one, that a line, this is a line, a secant line is a line through, a line through two points. I don't know what the lag is, through two points. Okay, so I just want you to visualize a line through two points. Then if I mention the word secant line. Also, what you're going to hear in this course is average rate of change. And you're used to that. You've seen that. This is an average rate of change. This is the change from x sub 1 to x sub 2. It's an average rate of change from x sub 1, um, from x sub 1 to x sub 2. Hmm. All right, now let's look at some notations. So we can say that um, 
the slope of this secant line, also known as that average rate of change, okay, the slope of the secant line m is equal to, let's look at the notation. I think you guys are used to it. It's the change in the y's divided by the change in the x's. So according to the way I have it labeled, I'm going to produce what we call the difference quotient. Difference quotient. Because I'm subtracting and I'm also dividing. Right, nothing new that you guys haven't seen from years past. I think you started your study of average rate of change way back when you were in Algebra 1. Um, it might not have looked like this. You probably were dealing with specific points, numerical uh, values. Um, but here we're going to um, do some work with notation that represents something you're familiar with. So let's move on and let's look at the tangent line to a nonlinear graph. Okay, um, through your early look at um, this topic, uh, I guess you guys would have seen that this is a line through one point. And I also want to mention um, instantaneous rate of change. So up here when we're dealing with the change from x sub 1 to x sub 2, um, for a tangent line we're dealing with um, uh, the intersection um, of the curve at just one point. So it's not an average rate of change across an interval. It's a change that's occurring at, it's a change that's happening at one location on the graph. So let me go ahead and put that here. We're going to call this instantaneous. instantaneous, oh my goodness, rate of change. Okay, um, and um, you might well have guessed by now that when I uh, titled the notes, I titled them A-Rock versus I-Rock. A-Rock standing for average rate of change and IROC, instantaneous rate of change. So just a quick way to say um, the topics that we're discussing. All right, and this is an instantaneous rate of change not from one x to another x value, but at x sub one or whatever we wanted to call it. So let's come over here and draw a graph of this situation. Is. Okay, drawing a similar graph. Uh, I'm going to choose, say, this x value right here. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and call it x sub 1. Goodness. Okay, so going up to the graph and locating that point, I'm talking about this point right here. Okay. So again, if I named this graph, I could call it y equals f of x.
Okay, and likewise, the name of this uh, point here, or the ordered pair that represents that point, would be x sub one. Why it's lagging? And the function evaluated at x sub one. Okay, so a graphical representation of a tangent line to a nonlinear graph would have us go to that one particular point at x sub one, right here. And um, as best I can, again, you might want to get a straight edge, okay, and put the straight edge up against the graph at x sub one and draw in uh, a representation of the tangent line. So I am trying to draw in a tangent line to the curve at x sub one. And that's not good. Okay, so we see one thing that's not, not good here. All right. Hmm. Not good at all. Good, good thing we've uh, looked at tangent lines prior to now because that would not be clear at all to you guys. So uh, that is supposed to be a tangent line, uh, uh, touching the curve. Uh, grazing curve there at that one point. Um, so uh, let's look over here. All right, so here's where we're at with finding the slope of that tangent line. In previous courses, you were able to find slopes of tan or slopes of lines by finding the change in y divided by the change in change in x. Well, here we see that we only have one point. So you can't find a change in y with respect to a change in x. So okay, what do we do? Well, that's the question. That's where we're at. We're going to do some more work in class and um, some more work through the videos. Um, this is going to help get us through some of the sections in this chapter about how do we find the slope of that tangent line. So that's kind of the guiding question where I'm going to leave you um, with this video right here is how do we find the slope of the tangent line? Uh, and so um, we will get to that, but what we're going to do on the worksheet here is um, I need to continue to practice notation as well with you guys. So I'm going to leave this question hanging for us right now. I'm going to transition, change gears. We're going to look at um, notation um, that's going to be helpful in answering this question right here. So um, I'll see you in a second.